Welcome to Revelation Unraveled. I'm your host, William Tapley, also known as the Third Eagle of the Apocalypse and the Co-Prophet of the End Times. On this program, I want to talk about the five titles of the Blessed Virgin Mary, because this is very important in the End Times. As you know, in our battle against the Antichrist, Jesus is the Commander-in-Chief. But don't forget, Mary is his five-star general. And the two weapons Jesus will use to defeat the Antichrist are Mary's rosary and her scapular. And on this program, I want to look at the five titles of Mary to show you why she has been given the honor of defeating the Antichrist. Her first title is Mother of God. Her second title is the Immaculate Conception. Her third title is that she is ever virgin. Her fourth title is that she is Queen of Heaven that is the assumption, and lastly, that she is co-redemptrix of mankind. Now recently I've been listening on YouTube to debates between Protestants and Catholics, and in general, Protestants tend to degrade Mary, and Catholics tend to give her more honor than is really due her. Now Catholics and Protestants have been arguing about these titles forever, it seems, and I think you need to realize that you must fight together because we have a common enemy. The Antichrist will defeat us if we do not get our act together. Now on some of these titles I agree with the Protestants and some I agree with the Catholics. Let's take her first title, Mother of God. This is misleading and I agree with that. The reason is Mary is not the Mother of God as a Trinity. In other words, Mary is not the Mother of God the Father. She is not the mother of God the Holy Spirit. She is the mother of Jesus. I believe in this case Protestants are correct to insist in a proper title for Mary. She can be called the mother of Jesus, or even better, we can call her what Elizabeth called her, and that is the mother of my Lord. On the other hand, Protestants must follow the same rule when a Catholics declare that Mary is sinless. How do we know that Mary is sinless? Because she did not need a savior. If you go by the Bible, you know that Mary said, God is my savior. Now if you say that Mary cannot be the mother of God, because God is a trinity, and you are correct, then you also must acknowledge that since God is Mary's savior, Jesus is not her savior. Jesus died on the cross for all the rest of us. Remember, God himself gives Mary the title Blessed Among Women through the Archangel Gabriel. So God does not save Mary from sin. He saves her from the ignominy of obscurity. For from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Now I know some people object and say, well Mary had to offer a sin offering following Jesus' birth. She offered pigeons in the temple. But that was merely to avoid scandal. Jesus did the same thing when he paid the temple tax. As he told his apostles, the son does not need to pay the temple tax, but he did anyway in order to avoid scandal. The same with Mary. That's the only reason she offered sin offering in the temple. Now her third title is that she is ever virgin. Well, Mary herself says this. When the angel says that she is going to have a child, she says, how can this happen? I do not know man. When she says, I do not know man, she is declaring her vow of celibacy. She is declaring that she will be forever a virgin. Now, Mary's fourth title is Queen of Heaven. And this is right out of the book of Revelation. St. John sees Mary in heaven with a crown of 12 stars on her head. Now Mary is in heaven. She is wearing a crown. It is only logical to say that Mary is therefore queen of heaven. How can this be anyone else when St. John says that her son will rule mankind with a rod of iron? This can only be Mary. Now some people say, well, this could be Israel. But all you have to do is read a little further on and you realize that her seed have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Therefore, this woman cannot possibly be Israel. Now, in the end times, when Elijah returns, 
he will convert 144,000 Jews. This is the remnant of Israel. They will indeed have the testimony of Jesus Christ. But remember, St. John sees this woman in heaven 2,000 years ago. She is wearing a crown. She must be the queen of heaven, and she can only be Mary. Now Mary's last title is co-redemptrix. Now here I do object somewhat to the term, just as I did not care for the term mother of God, because Mary is the mother of Jesus. The word co in this case is confusing, because sometimes it means a subordinate, such as a co-pilot, but it also can mean an equal, as co-worker. Mary is not the equal of Jesus. But on the other hand, the plane cannot get off the ground without the co-pilot, and neither can redemption occur without the ascent of Mary. That is why Mary is co-redemptrix. And one of the requirements of being a redeemer of mankind is that you must suffer. And Mary did indeed suffer for humanity. The Bible says clearly that Mary will suffer a wound in her heart. Your heart shall be pierced with a sword, as St. Simeon tells her. Certainly watching her son die on a cross was heart-wrenching. And even in these end times, remember Mary is going to be wounded in her heel. She will crush Satan's head, but he will strike at her heel. And as I have explained on other programs, especially my program, Fourth Prophecy. Now tomorrow is Super Bowl Sunday, and as you know, I have predicted that it will not take place. And the reason I say that is because it is the 45th Super Bowl. And the number 44 is an end times number. 4 is an end times number, and 444 four, four is a biblical end times number. In fact, for this same reason, I have predicted that Barack Obama will be our last elected president. Let's look at my prediction from last year. Next month, we will see the 44th Super Bowl. I believe that indicates that will be the last Super Bowl. Please welcome legendary Hall of Fame quarterback from the Dallas Cowboys and the MVP of Super Bowl, Roger Staubach and the Vince Lombardi Trophy. So the question is, will God use this year's Super Bowl as a prophecy of the downfall of America and Barack Obama? Now, last year's Super Bowl was a prophetic event. The Indianapolis Colts stood for the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The New Orleans Saints stood for Christians in the end times. And as you know, for most of the game, the four horsemen of the apocalypse led that game. They were defeating the saints, but in the end, the saints prevailed. It was a prophetic Super Bowl. On this program, I want to give you a brief update on that horrible shooting out in Arizona earlier this year in which Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords suffered a horrendous head wound when she was shot by that crazy killer, Jared Loeffner. Now I want to make two more points, one of which was given to me by a YouTuber. And that is that this is first of all a warning from God to America, and secondly it is an explanation of the head wound which the Antichrist will receive. We know this was a specific warning to America because the little girl who was murdered, Christina Green, was born on 9-11. And another amazing fact about this shooting is that it occurred on January 8th this year. And the significance about that date is that it is exactly 119 days from 9-11-2010. And I want to talk about the accident that Obama suffered this past week when he cut his lip and the significance of the 12 stitches which were required to close that cut. As you know, Barack Obama is found in Bible prophecy. He is an extremely important figure in American history. Our first president was George Washington. Our last president is Barack Obama.
It's very interesting that he just sent an aircraft carrier called the George Washington to the South China Sea. I believe that was a provocation. I believe that's found in Daniel chapter number 40. Those 12 stitches refer to Daniel chapter number 11 because Obama is the most important person in Daniel chapter number 11, even though there is only one verse that refers to him. The first 12 verses in chapter 11 of Daniel are divided into a 4-4-4 four, four, four sequence. The last 15 verses are divided into a 5-5-5 five, five, five sequence, but they are marked off by another 4-4-4 four, four, four pattern. That's because there are four objects in verses number 33, 38, and 43. Obama's number in Bible prophecy is 444. That's because he's the 44th president of the United States. That's because he was born on the 4th of a month. He was elected on the 4th of a month. This week has been one of the most amazing times for the fulfillment of Bible prophecy that I have ever seen. First of all, we had North Korea attacking South Korea. That was the beginning of World War III, the first shot, so to speak. But also, we had the Pope okaying some forms of condoms for male prostitutes. Believe it or not, these two events are related. The countdown for Armageddon has begun. And more importantly, the countdown for the abomination of desolation. Let's take a look at the tribulation timeline and how these events are coming into focus. Now on the chart behind me is the tribulation time frame. It begins with World War III, extends through the abomination of desolation at the midpoint of the tribulation, and ends with Armageddon. Now as we know from a previous video of mine, Armageddon occurs between October 13th and November 29th of the year 2017. And seven years before that, is World War III. And as we know from events this week, World War III began on November 23rd. With World War III beginning on November 23rd, I'm not surprised because that is an evil number. I have been looking for such an evil number. 11, of course, is a homosexual number, as I have explained in other videos. 23 is an evil number also, because 2 is placed before 3. Two signifies man, three signifies God. And two-thirds equals the decimal 0 